Well, this is a special night for all of us. Okay, here we go. <laughs> One night in 1945, a young sailor named Earl Eskridge, home on leave from San Diego, was on his way to the Carthay Theater, Carthay Circle Theater, to pick up Virgie Tinger. It was to be their first date, and Earl wanted to make a good impression, so he cleaned up his 1936 custom Ford Coupe, his baby, as Chuck Eskridge tells me, and parks that baby out in front of the theater, and guess what happened? Another car crashes into it, into his beautiful hot rod, tearing the front bumper off. Earl had to wire up the front bumper in order to get Virgie back to Culver City. Being a rough first date, Earl decided that he'd make it up to her, and shortly after that, he took Virgie to the Palladium to dance. But let not, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Our story actually begins when Ed Tinger, of Hungarian descent, migrated from New Jersey to Helena, Montana. He found employment working for the State Nursery and Seed Company. It was in Helena that he met his future bride, Ruth Ernst. They were married in Helena on September 7, 1922. Shortly after their marriage, they decided to pack it up and move to California. The year was 1923 when they settled in their new little town of Culver City. They bought their first home on Jackson Avenue and crossed the street from the little market that now is the Jackson Market. They took take a look at the original 1923 tax bill for Jackson Avenue. $820 was the value of the home and the property taxes were $34.43. <laughs> what do you think that value is today? I'm pretty positive there's a two-story apartment building sitting on that property right now. Edward Tinger became a landscape gardener in Beverly Hills, doing gardens for such people as Monty Blue, Norma Talmadge, Norma Shearer, Ed May Oliver, and many other Hollywood celebrities. Ruth Tinger worked at Beverly, in Beverly Hills as a cook. Within a few years, their daughter Virgie Lou was born. Growing up in Culver City on Jackson Avenue, Virgie attended Culver Grammar, and eventually moving on to Hamilton High School. Culver City was a wonderful place to grow up. In 1934, Edward rented a storefront on, at, one, at 9061 Washington Boulevard. It had a large old house on the back of the property. On March 17, 1934, the nursery opened its doors. Ruth would travel downtown LA for fresh cut flowers that they sold in the shop. On their opening day, they took in a large sum of money, $22.05. Here's the image of the original sales receipts for the day. When the storefront that the nursery occupied was condemned by the Culver City Fire Department, it became necessary for them to quickly move their business. Eventually, all the properties on that row were torn down and Mike Miller Toyota stands there today. Ed and Ruth purchased a piece of property at 10119 Washington Boulevard and Jean Place, just east of St. Augustine Church and across from MGM Studios. They posted a sign on the property reading, The Future Home of Culver City Flower Shop. But at the same time, Al Simons of Sadus Flowers was renting a space in the hall building. Al decided he was going to move his flower business closer to MGM Studios. So he rented an already built building right next to Ed's vacant lot that he had just purchased. But this opened up space for Ruth and Ed to relocate temporarily. They moved to the Culver City Flower Shop into the Hall Building at 9545 Washington Boulevard next to the old Sunset Drug and Gray's Jewelers. Mr. Gray, as some of you might remember, was the father of Linda Gray, famous for her role on Dallas. This was the end of the nursery business, but the new beginning for Culver City Flower Shop. Ed and Ruth were always very creative when it came to decorating the interior of the flower shop and their store windows. They really nailed it. It was always so fragrant and beautiful. Whether it was Valentine's Day, Easter, or Christmas, the window would change with the seasons. Passerbys always looked forward to the new displays. 
They once even had a living, breathing woman sitting in a chair making corsages for their Mother's Day window. <laughs> The Fiesta La Bayona windows were also award winners with the Tingers. The Star News stated, always so original and attractive, it drew the oohs and ahs of hundreds who stopped by and gazed. Leave it to Ruth and Eddie, they sure know their flowers and their decoration themes. In July of 1944, Ed purchased another property at 9527 Culver Boulevard, just a few doors east of the Hall building. It had been a bicycle shop and was a nice space for the business in downtown. They operated there for a few years, and in this photo here, you can see their new delivery truck with a young Virgie on her bike. <laughs> Notice all the space behind her? Pretty open up. <laughs> When their building was completed on the land at 10119, they rented it to a furniture company for a short time. And then they bought the property next door from Mrs. Bell, Dr. Bell's mother. This made them now Seda's landlords. <laughs> Sadis moved across the street to the and the furniture store moved out and Ed and Ruth now opened the Culver City Flower Shop and a sweet little antique store next door. They rented the little store at 9527, the old bicycle shop, and over the years it finally came down after an earthquake and it is now where the walkway or the paseo between Tender Greens and Samar Restaurant now stand. The family often refers to this space as the Tinger Paseo. <laughs> Mrs. Donald Douglas, whose husband created D Douglas Aircraft, was very particular about how the flowers were arranged and where they were placed at the plant. Earl tells me that she became unhappy with the florist that she was using and called Culver City Flower Shop out of the blue. So Ed and Ruth now had the contract for the flowers for Douglas Aircraft facility twice a week. They made this amazing design of the globe of flowers, and if you look closely, you can see a teeny little airplane circling the globe. I, told, I am told that the Tingers also did the flowers for Gone with the Wind at Selznick Studios. So now let's meet Earl's family. Around 1936, Bill and Jenny Eskridge leave Indiana. They traveled cross country with their three children, Charles, Phyllis, and Earl. They decided that Culver City would be their home. The kids were excited to see the ocean and they bought a house and lived at 4211 Huntley Avenue. All three children went to La Bayona and later attending Hamilton High. Bill worked at Douglas Aircraft as a jig builder and Jenny ran the home. When World War II began, Charles enlisted and served in Europe. Earl finished his schooling and took a job at Culver City Flower Shop delivering flowers for a few months just before he joined the Navy. He was stationed in San Diego where he worked as an instructor at a training base. On weekends he would come home on leave and I was told by Virgie that he looked her up. <laughs> Now this brings us back to the beginning of our story, to Earl and Virgie's courtship. Earl tells me he asked Virgie if she would take a drive up the coast to Santa Barbara to visit his older brother Charles. Charles had been severely injured when he was blown out of a second story building while fighting in Germany. Both his arms and legs were both in full casts. Earl picked Virgie up in his father's 1934 Pontiac and they were off. The car had bad tires and with war rationing on the rubber, you could not find new tires for sale. But he was confident the car would do fine. Things went well on the way up to Santa Barbara, but on their way home, the car which had the bad tires and the roads not being what they are today, Earl had numerous tire blowouts. And eventually the two crawled back into Culver City on shredded tires and metal rims sparks of flying. <laughs> this was another memorable date for Virgie and her new beau. <laughs> But despite all of these automotive events, Virgie and Earl Eskridge tied the knot on May 4th, 1946, while Earl was serving in San Diego. After his discharge from the Navy, 
Earl went back to work for the Tingers at the flower shop, making arrangements and delivering flowers for 35 cents an hour, while his new bride, Virgie, was the assistant business agent, business manager at LA City College, making 50 cents an hour. They lived in a third floor apartment on Figueroa Street, which was managed by Earl's grandparents, Wayne and Mary Eskridge. They lived there for about two years before moving back to Virgie's parents for a short time and then after that rented a small single on Culver Boulevard and Huron with their first son, Bill. Ed Tinger was very active in our city's politics and its growth. He was a longtime member of the Culver City Chamber of Commerce, the Culver City Elks, the Juvenile Crime Prevention Program, and he joined the Culver City Lions Club in 1936, where he served as the president in 1946 to 1947. He also served as a Culver City Civil He also served as a Culver City Civil Service Commissioner from 1943 to 1947 and on the screen you can see the letter of appointment. Many have told me that Ed was not only just a great guy, but a real practical joker. <laughs> Virgie will tell you that if her father had a passion, it was for flowers and boxing. He hit the bag many times a day. Ruth Tinger was also very active in our city. She was a charter member of the Culver City Business and Professional Women's Club and the Culver City Women's Club. She was a member of the Women of the Moose, the Culver City Dandelions, and the Women's Division of the Chamber of Commerce. Even after she retired, she stayed active with Culver City Senior Citizen Center, where she served on the board of directors and held offices in various senior citizen clubs. She enjoyed decorating and sharing her love of flowers. The Tingers were very smart in real estate. They bought, built, and sold many properties in the Culver, in, in homes in the Culver City area. With a lot of hard work of their own, Earl and Virgie bought their first home, a home on, that Helen Young built at 4269 Jasmine Avenue, where the, they had two more sons, Mike and Stan. The boys went to Culver Grammar, Culver Junior High, and then on to Culver High School. The family spent 15 years on Jasmine before they moved to their home on Drakewood Street in the Culver Crest. Earl told me that the person that contributed most to his knowledge and skills in the floral trade was a man who worked for his in-laws named Mike Karakian. Earl continued to work for his in-laws, making arrangements and decorating the seasonal windows until 1951, when a wonderful opportunity happened for him. The Tingers were considering opening another shop in the newly constructed Culver Center. They abandoned the idea and decided to move the Culver City Flower Shop to their building at 10119 Washington Boulevard, where they operated their business until they both retired in 1966. In 1951, when the storefront in the Culver Center became available, Earl was asked by the developer if he wanted the space. Earl jumped at the chance to have his own business. This was the beginning for the Culver Center Flowers. This did not set well with Ruth, that her son-in-law was now her competition. But nevertheless, Earl's business began to really prosper. Earl went to his parents in 1954, and with their help, he bought the property at 10801 Washington Boulevard, where it opened its doors in September of 1954. At this location, Earl began dressing his own windows for the various holidays, including Christmas and Easter, and always the favorite with the kids is Easter time. The Chamber of Commerce and the Star News would hold contests for the best best dressed store window displays and floats during the Fiesta La Bayona. Earl and Virgie, with their artistry and talent, decorated the first prize winning float and Ed that year took the first prize place, first place for their Fiesta La Bayona window. The Tingers and the Estridges competed for many awards with their floral arrangements and window displays that both flower shops won over the years. 
Mike began working with his grandparents, Ed and Ruth, at the Culver City Flower Shop in the sixth grade, and continued with them through his high school years where he found his passion for music. Life was very good for Virgie and Earl. They had three wonderful boys and a very successful business. In 1966, Ed and Ruth decided to retire, and they turned the business over to their daughter, Virgie. Ed Tinger died in 1981, leaving us with a little poem. I love this poem. We've wined and dined in many places. We've been served good food by various races. We have yet to find a town or city with worse restaurants than Culver City. <laughs> Kind of makes you wonder what Ed would think now of downtown Culver City, right? He probably wishes he had a storefront down there still. I used to say that they rolled up the, car, the, the sidewalks here in Culver City at 6 p.m. every night. But not anymore. On August 2nd, 1969, the two businesses, the Culver City Flower Shop and the Culver Center Florists, were merged into one company at the Washington Boulevard location. The quote was, to serve the community more efficiently, we will be in one location. Earl and his staff were always very creative with their floral arrangements, including what I love, the famous poodle arrangement. Those are mums. I think it's amazing. I used them in a movie once. Also, he makes great floral corsages. But the money corsages are my favorite, like the one my sister is wearing. My dad made me one. I still have it in my safe. I was going to wear it tonight. I forgot. <laughs> Had $500, five one, $500 of, of uh, corsage. They can do anything, those guys. Culver City Flower Shop did not... Uh, Culver City Flower Shop did all the floral arrangements for the television series Dallas, the loose zinnias that E.T. was given to eat, and the casket floral blankets used in Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club's band, and many other films and television shows over the years. Mike and Earl also supplied me with flowers that I needed for Water for Elephants, The Aviator, and the roses that I needed for a scene in my new HBO miniseries Big Little Lies. But of course, Culver City Flower Shop's specialty is weddings, including my parents and many other local couples over the years. The flowers must have worked because my folks have been married almost 60 years. Earl and Mike have always been there for me to send a birthday, Thanksgiving centerpieces, or the occasional corsage for Mother Day, Mother's Day when I was on location and couldn't be home. No matter where I was, one phone call did it all. Earl, along with Chuck Graver and Wayne Parker, started the Culver City Little League in 1956. There was such a great turnout that they had to create the National League and the American League. The original games were played on Overland in a big field next to the La Bayona Creek. Our library was built near this location. The league played there for four years until they moved up to the new Ron Smith Field, now Bill Botts Field. Earl worked with the Little League for 15 years. Here you can see a plaque presented to Earl on the 50th anniversary of the Culver City Little League on behalf of its 25,714 players who crossed the plate. Wow. Earl also served on the Parks and, Rec Parks and Recreation Commission with Sid Cronenthal. Earl, as a member of the 2030 Club, invited the Culver City Fire Chief to a, to a luncheon at the co old Casa Manana restaurant, which was originally where the Cotton Club stood, and at the corner of National, between National, on, uh, operated on National between Washington and Venice. And after a nice lunch with the members of the community, the Fire Chief condemned the building. Good one, Earl. <laughs> Like I said, Earl, along with John McNally and Dick Cronin, were instrumental in establishing the first teen center in Culver City. 
It was just across the hall from here in the Vets Auditorium building. Eventually the Teen Center moved its location and now it houses the Culver City Historical Society archives, or the ARC as we call it. <laughs> Earl and Virgie were also very involved with the Culver City Babe Ruth Baseball League where Earl managed the team for many years. Virgie, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, Seroptimus Club, and, and, and Exchange Et, received her fair share of awards too. Among many organizations that Earl Eskridge was affiliated with, they include the Culver City Exchange Club, Chamber of Commerce, the American Legion, and 64 years charter member of the Culver City Elks Club. The many plaques and trophies and awards that adorn the walls of the Culver City Flower Shop attest to the Eskridge's love and support towards the growth of Culver City, including one from Julian Dixon in the House of Representatives for their numerous outstanding contribution and dedicated community service. When Earl and Virgie were not at the shop creating beautiful arrangements, they would escape in their motor home and travel all over the U.S. and Canada. The boys were grown and Mike was handling the store, which gave them time to relax and enjoy all that they had worked for. In 1984, George Newhouse of the La Bayona Savings and Loan approached Earl Eskridge, Vern Larson, Bill Fecko, and June Malone to open Culver National Bank at 5399's Palveta Boulevard. The bank operated successfully there for over a decade before being sold to the Bank of Los Angeles, later to Santa Monica Bank, and then today it is U.S. Bank. In the fall of 1969, around the time of the merger, Mike Eskridge continued to work at the Culver City Flower Shop and attending Santa Monica City College. He was part of the student body that formed a committee that was instrumental in changing the name of the college to Santa Monica College, SMC. Mike was involved with the SMC marching band. They were all of 125. Mike played the trumpet, the trombone, and even the cymbals. It was here that he met his wife, Patty. They marched together in parades all over the nation, including the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York and Carnival in Mazatlan. The SMC marching band was very much ahead of its time with its band members playing the electric organ and electric bass guitar. They even danced to midnight hour. Mike and Patty were married on October 23rd, 1976. Mike gave Patty a ribbon and said, match your wedding dress to this. The wedding dress was lace that was made of multicolors, that Mike told me. And you would have to plan the date around football, the SMC and UCLA games, or his father would not, he would have to miss the wedding. <laughs> Mike's passion for flowers and design kept him busy with weddings, birthdays, and all the holidays. But he always made time to create beautiful designs for competitions with the Garden Club, which here you can see him in his big win on the screen. Mike, following in his father's footsteps, and his grandfather, also got involved in our city. He was a member of the Culver City JCs with members such as Mike Balkman, Jimmy Quarte, and even his brother, Bill Eskridge. Mike also joined the Lions Club. He told me because it was the club that his grandfather was a member of. He was acting president for two years in 1984 to 1985. Patty got her teaching credentials in 1976 and went to, went in six and he went to she went to work in Watts. During this time, he and Patty were beginning their family. Their son Adam was born in 1982 and their second son Brian was born in 1985. She taught there for 10 years before applying uh, for a position uh, for applying with 127 other applicants for one position at our own Farragut Elementary School. She got it, and she taught the first grade for 19 years. She received such awards as Culver City Teacher of the Year, Los Angeles County Teacher of the Year, and was a finalist for the Culver C California State Teacher of the Year. Patty is now retired, and her, her favorite job is watching her grandson Caleb during the day. 
Virgie and Errol's son Bill now lives in Fresno with his wife and two children. He works in downtown Los Angeles at Arrow Foods. During the week, he stays in Culver City and roommates with his father, which, by the way, Earl calls him his chef. <laughs> and then on Friday nights, he makes the long trip back up to Fresno to be with his family. Earl continues to work at the flower shop six days a week at the ripe age of 88. He makes the trip each, Friday, each Saturday up to Agora to spend the weekend with Virgie. There's a good chance, if you are up real early in the morning, that you can spy Earl and his breakfast club, Phil Tangalakis, Joran Erickson, Andy Weissman, Steve Rose, and other drop-ins at the Grand Casino Bakery on Main Street. This breakfast has gone on for years, with many faces changing and the locations changing as well. But you can always be sure that Earl will be there. I always remember seeing Earl with Vern Larson and others when they, when they met at the S&W restaurant and the Roland Rye. Their son Stan is a CPA and lives in Agora with his wife Denise where they raised their two children. Chuck Eskridge, Earl's nephew and the son of Charles also worked for, with his uncles at the shop, cutting flower stems when they would come in and riding along with the delivery man, he'd jump out and take the flowers to the door of the lucky person receiving them. Later when he got his license, and he could look over the steering wheel, he started making deliveries himself. Chuck told me half the guys in Culver City worked at the flower shop delivering over the years. He also told me that he might be the reason that Uncle Earl placed a time clock in the shop. <laughs> I had the great fortune over the years to work with Chuck. He's a very talented motion picture scenic artist and standby painter. I always look forward to seeing him at work because there is no one that can break up the day and tell a great story that puts you in stitches better than Chuck. I always loved hearing the stories of early Culver City and stories of Bob Plank and my Uncle Bill. If you ever get a chance, look him up on IMDb. He has a, quite the amazing resume of top build films. He was a company man for Clint Eastwood for many years. Chuck is now retired and lives in a wonderful home on Albright with his wife Tammy, Lula Bell, and the cat. Tammy is my dear friend and member of the Historical Society. She has given countless hours of herself and volunteers for everything. Like her husband, I always look forward to seeing her. With so many stories, so many photographs, it was so hard to decide what to tell you about and give and to, to tell you every detail of the Tinger Eskridge family history. But I hope that we've given you some idea of how much this family has done for this city. Its growth, its children, and its organizations. Their constant commitment is what I find so honorable. Tonight, we also celebrate 70 years of marriage for Virgie and Earl. I think that if Her our founder, Harry Culver, was still alive today, he would agree with me that this is one family from Culver City that story needed to be shared. So, there you have it. The people that helped me put this together uh, is my father, Dennis. He and I do countless hours of uh, talking and putting the PowerPoint together and visiting people at their homes and invading their personal lives. And uh, then Michelle gets us permission to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, Tito, who uh, is always right up in front getting our raffle tickets and our 50-50 tickets. My sister, Denise, for... Whatever it is we need her to do, she does. Um, my mother, Willie, in support of the Historical Society, also, whatever we need her to do, she's right there. Jeannie Conklin, and my dear friend, Tammy Eskridge. I'd like to thank everybody on my committee. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions or like to ask them anything or come up and share, Earl, you want to come up and say a few words? Come on up here, Earl. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, everybody for showing up tonight. It's quite an honor for our family to uh, be honored. And uh, Hope and Dennis uh, did a tremendous amount of work. It was really great. But I'd like to tell you that Culver City has been a wonderful place to grow up in and see our family and all our good friends in the neighborhood. It, it's really been a wonderful life here, and we appreciate 
the honor very much. Thank you very much.